Okay, welcome back. So now that you're a bit more comfortable with variables, I think the next topic we should tackle is conditionals. Let's get going, and I have an example for you. And what I'd like to do here is dynamically render a message that indicates whether or not you've read a particular book. So let me grab one real quick. All right, here's the closest one. What do we have here? We have Dark Matter, really good book. I highly recommend it. Okay, so when we're done, if you've read the book, it should say something like, you have read Dark Matter. Okay, so let's boot up our server. But this time, rather than manually writing it out, most terminals allow you to press up to cycle through your previous commands. And I'll do that this time. All right, then I can command click on the URL. All right, and sure enough, as you'd expect, we get our static message. But now, real quick, let's write a little CSS. So I will right click, choose inspect, and I'm gonna select the body tag here. And even if you're not comfortable with the CSS, just come along for the ride. I'm gonna set a display of grid on the body, and then I'm gonna use this place items property to put everything in the center. But right now, the body is only as tall as its content, which isn't very tall at all. So let's set the height of the body to 100% of the viewport's height. And what this will do is perfectly center it on the page. All right, so I'll bring that back, or I can press Shift-Command-C. And then one last thing, let's set the margins to zero. Okay, and then actually one more <laughs> font family, let's set it to uh, sans serif. All right, that's all the CSS we're gonna write here. So I will select that, switch back to PHP Storm, and then in my head tag, I'll do it inline here, and we'll say on the body tag, apply these styles. And now if we switch back and give it a refresh, yeah, it just looks a little cleaner to my eyes. Okay, so now we wanna make this dynamic. So how would we do that? Well, let's begin by opening PHP tags. So, hmm, I think the first thing we should do is turn the name of the book into a variable. So let's do that now. We'll call it name equals a string, and then again, we conclude it with a semicolon. Now, let's reference that variable. Clear this out, open PHP, echo the name, and then close PHP. Okay, come back, give it a refresh, and yeah, we get the exact same thing, very cool. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is indicate in some way uh, whether or not the user has read Dark Matter. So again, in, in many cases, this will come from a database. You'll have a database of the user and the books they've read. Have they read it? Have they not? Or sometimes you'll make an API call. Think of that as sort of like an external service that has all of this data. Uh, but yeah, right now in our learning, why don't we just hard code this? So has dark matter been read? I'll call it read. And what would I say here? Yes or no? Well, we could do something like this, but generally we use what's known as a Boolean. Think of a Boolean as simply true or false. Has it been read? True or false? In our case, why don't we say true? Okay, so now think about it. We should check whether the book has been read, and if so, we write, you have read the book. And if it has not been read, maybe we write, you have not read Dark Matter, okay? So let's see how we might do that. And if you want, pause the video and see if you can figure that out on your own. All right, great job if you figure that out. But if not, no worries. I wouldn't blame you because we haven't yet reviewed what's known as a conditional. So think of a conditional as a way to create a branch in your logic. Or, or put more simply, think of it as a way to ask a question. And usually it starts with the keyword if. If such and such turns out to be the case, then I wanna do this. But if it's not the case, then I wanna do something else. So maybe you're going to lunch, maybe you're going to Subway. If Subway is open, then let's go in and eat. But if Subway is not open, let's go somewhere else, right? It's a simple question. And we can write that with PHP by saying if, and then open parentheses, and yeah, real quick, notice how when I did that, my editor automatically added a closing parentheses. Most editors will do that these days. All right, next, ask your question here, and then open a curly brace. And once again, my editor adds the closing curly brace. So think of everything that occurs between these curly braces uh, as the logic for what should happen if this question returns true. 
if this question has a positive uh, response. But in our case, yeah, we can't we can't use basic English here. We have to speak in terms of the language. So in our case, I really just want to say, well, if the book has been read, then prepare a message. So let's clear this out. And I'm just going to say, if read, or in other words, if the value for this variable is true, then create a message. And maybe this message will say, uh, well, exactly what we have here. You have read name, just like that. Okay, so now if I come down here, I'm gonna replace all of this with an opening PHP tag that echoes the message itself. Okay, but now before we review this in the browser, it's gonna work. So spoiler alert, it works. Uh, but yeah, did you notice how there's a little squiggly underneath message? Variable message is probably undefined. So again, when you use a good code editor, it's almost like a robotic assistant that will give you little pieces of advice. For example, what if red was set to false? Well, think about it. What do you think would happen? And if you're working along, pause the video and um, ask yourself that. What would happen here? Hmm. All right, let's come back. Give it a refresh. Aha, we get a warning, undefined variable message. But now you might be thinking, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. We created our message variable right here. So why on earth is it saying undefined when I have proof that we defined it right here? Okay, and this is what being a programmer is. You need to go through it line by line to make sure you understand what's happening. So let's do it together. We start by creating a name that evaluates to dark matter, fine. Then we have another variable called red that is set to false. And then we say, well, if red is true or positive, then, keyword there, then create a message variable. Okay, so let's say that again. If red is true, only on that condition do we create a variable called message. But now red is set to false, which means this condition, this question fails. If read, no, it hasn't been read, so don't do anything here. That's what's happening. At no point in this logic do we create the message variable, which is why PHP is squawking at you. Okay, so why don't we do this instead? I'm going to say else, and then once again, between these braces is the logic that should happen if the book has not been read. And in that case, why don't we duplicate this message variable and say you have not read the name of the book. Okay, so now the message that we display to the user is dynamic. So if I come back and give it a refresh, you have not read dark matter. But if we toggle this to true, come back, refresh, you have read dark matter. Pretty cool. All right, so let's finish up by making just a couple small tweaks or a couple small refactors. First up, right down here where we echo out the message. Um, no problem whatsoever, but as you can imagine, in PHP, echoing the value of a variable is really, really common. So with that in mind, there is a shorthand version, and it looks like this. Okay, so let's talk about it. Actually, real quick, let me prove it to you. Refresh, and now we have, you have read dark matter two times. Um, so notice, less than question equals, that is identical to opening PHP and calling echo. It's the exact same thing. So if it feels weird to you and you don't want to use it, all right, fine, no problem. Uh, but I will tell you, most people will reach for this. And then also notice how I was able to omit the semicolon. And that's because immediately after we echo the variable, we instantly close PHP. So in those situations, the semicolon is optional. Keep it if you want, and it might be a good idea right now just to get you in the habit of always concluding a statement, so to speak, with a semicolon. But do know, if you ever see it being omitted, that's why. Okay, so from now on, whenever I need to echo out a variable, I will almost always reach for this uh, particular syntax. And in fact, I'll remove the semicolon. All right, last little thing before I let you go. Notice we have one more squiggly line here. Condition is always true because red is evaluated at this point. All right, so think about what's happening here. It's helping you out. It's saying, hey, you're asking this question if the user has read the book. 
But because you set this variable to true, that means 100% of the time, the answer to that question is going to be yes or true. Or in other words, if the answer is always yes, then this logic here where we proceed if the answer is not yes will never fire. It's superfluous. Why does it exist? Delete it. And then once again, if the answer is always yes, then why are you asking the question? You could remove that as well. And in our little example here, this is a little more appropriate. But yeah, remember, in real life, the answer to that question will be dynamic. Maybe you've read the book, but John hasn't read the book. Maybe you didn't read it last week, but this week you did. In those cases, you won't know the answer to that question, and that is why uh, the conditional here would be appropriate. Okay, just some things to, to think about. All right, you're making really good progress. I know we're starting to creep into slightly more complex logic, so keep playing around with this, and when you're ready, move on to the next episode.